Power 106, LA's number one for hip hop. Good morning. We are morning. brown bag, and you know we love talking boxing. Boxing right. is our thing. Yep. Brown bag and boxing just go together. Go hand in okay? hand. So that's why it's so awesome to me to be able to uh, celebrate and welcome a newcomer to the Golden Boy family, but also just to Power 106, our yep. guy Eric Priest. Eric, yeah. good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming through. Okay, so you're a recent signee to Golden Boy, and it's really cool because this fight coming up, Cepeda Gesta, it is the one we are all watching. You know, I'm a fan of Cepeda, also a fan of what Gesta did with JoJo, where everyone kind of thought he was like the underdog, and he's super humble, repping the Philippines. But then he came out, and he did what he, like he did what he had to do, right? Yeah. So seeing this upcoming fight is great, and you're on it as well. To be that, to have that, I know you just recently fought as well in May, right? I did, yeah. So to have that coming up, I'm sure this, this year, is looking fun and looking good for you how tell me about what this year has been like for you oh it's been um it's been a journey you know mm -hmm. it's like a lot of training um like i said like i changed camps out to like las vegas right after my last fight mm -hmm. um and learning experience it's just a year of growth yeah. and um you know i'm excited where it takes me especially with this fight coming up so yeah you joined uh, the golden boy family in april right mm -hmm. yeah uh, you yeah, guys april, announced yeah. it um tell me about what's changed for you like since then like what you know um in terms of like your career and like fighting and everything since then oh i mean it's just like um like you understand like how many fights you're gonna get you know yeah. the fights are you know they're right they're right in front of you mm -hmm. um the organization um just the promotion in general yeah um everything you know the golden boy family's been yeah. awesome you know oscar and eric you know they're really communicative and yeah you know never hesitate to you know respond you know just yeah, just on to the next thing so it's it's really it's been great it's been That's kind it. of a journey yeah we did our little digging on you and correct me if I'm wrong, but we heard that you started boxing when you were 10. Yeah. And you were really young in, and that your dad kind of taught you how to throw a punch. Can you talk to me about that? Yeah, I think my dad, just for me, my brother, mm -hmm. uh, he just wanted two kids that knew how to throw a punch. But then eventually <laughs> yeah. I kind of was like, I kind of have a knack for it. And so yeah. um, I originally I was doing a lot of combat sports, just like wrestling and jiu-jitsu. Got a lot of it, stuff. yeah, yeah. Then as I kind of like got older, I kind of narrowed in on just, you know, boxing's my thing. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of just took the wheel from there and started you know fighting a lot and uh yeah could you still kick someone's lights out though if you for sure to? yeah, okay. yeah I, might tear, I might tear something out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know how they trip they're out not about boxers coming. going into like ufc yeah. or like these other types of combat type sports you yeah. already have that in the tuck wow should that ever arise yeah i don't i don't know if i'll ever do that <laughs> yeah. but yeah. you know like, <laughs> yeah just in case maybe i like boxing <laughs> yeah you've been a new kid it seems in a lot of places because you talked about uh, rep in Kansas City, but you were born in Texas. Uh, now you're in in Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. Uh, did you move schools around a lot? Like, talk to me about that upbringing. Because being a new kid in anything, you have to kind of show and prove, you know, who you are in whatever yeah. city you're at. Yeah, I mean, like the majority of my childhood, I was raised in Kansas City. Okay, okay. nice. So that, that was like home base, yeah. pretty much. Um, but like, like right after high school and whatnot, I, you that's know, when you started moving around. LA oh, that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I, to a sense, yeah, I was kind of the new kid and mm -hmm. like, it was always just like, all right, I got to meet new people and this yeah. and that, um, new gyms, new training, that kind yeah. of stuff. But you know, I'm just, I'm locked in, I'm focused with just anything I'm doing, you mm -hmm. know? So everything else is just noise. I'm just like, you know, I show up for, to like that city for a purpose and that was to train and yeah. to get better and surround myself with uh, champions and whatnot and that's what I did so what? that's like uh, you yeah. know you know how hard it is to surround yourself with champions yeah. well, like you can't do like it's like <laughs> you know you just there. gotta be around yeah. all the greatness yeah you just gotta go in there. I was like you know like uh and just fight, you know yeah. what I mean? Like fight, people, yeah. you fight them, you know, mm -hmm. and just like you know, take what's it, learn, and yeah. Sorry, what's a typical day for you like in training camp in, in Vegas? Like, uh, wake up and what's the next steps? And so wake up. Yeah. Uh, depending on the day, it's either like a sparring day or just a training day. Yeah. Um, then the sessions are probably like two and a half hours or so, and yeah. then from that point, you know, get a little rest in between, and um, do like a long conditioning workout. I've been working with uh, Ismo Salas, who's a yep. Hall of Fame trainer, and then wow. a Tony Brady, who's uh, my conditioning coach, who works with Caleb Plant, um, mm -hmm. Mario Barrios, Ryan Mendoza, a lot of those guys. And so, um, yeah, it's just high-class training all yeah. around, you know. Yep. It's like, you, know, you basically go from one workout to the next workout to, like, sleeping. to It's just a routine. It's a cycle. Uh, every day kind of repeats itself, and that's the only way to get better, you know what I mean? Like yeah. 1% every day. Your ethnicity, your background, you're Korean? Yeah, oh, I'm half Korean. Half, half Korean? Korean, yeah. That's super awesome. You know, there's a big Korean community out here in L.A., and yeah. I'm not too sure that they have that type of representation crazy in boxing. A lot of what boxing goes back towards is your background, you know, what you're representing. You know, Cepeda, by nature, 
He's going to have the Mexicans. Hesta, by nature, is going to have the Filipino population and the and the community after him. Do you find yourself, like, the Korean community really backing you and seeing, like, okay, we we, we got one and we're really For sure, we got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, like... Uh, I mean, like you said, there's a big Korean community out in like, L.A. And so yeah. when I first came out to L.A., like, they kind of really accepted me and brought yeah. me in a little Dope. bit. And so, like, um, different organizations and whatnot have been like, kind of pushing me a little cool. bit, which is which is awesome. That's you know? awesome. And Korean Heritage Night at the Dodger Stadium, I'm sure. Can you tap <laughs> in? All that good stuff. Good For sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but uh, there really wasn't much uh, of a Korean community in Kansas. You know, there's uh, a small, there's small oh, yeah. bit, but, you know, there's only, like, five of us. So... You know, <laughs> Five, really? no, I'm playing. Right. I'm playing. How many Latinos are there? Because I don't, I don't even feel like we're out there. Uh, yeah, there's there's, there's yeah. a good amount of Latinos there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but so it's just, I don't know. I just, I'm really thankful to like, uh, yeah, and I'm I'm proud of like you know the where I represent. Of so, course, yeah, so. yeah. And I see you taking it so many places. Not only do you box, you're also a model. Where does Golden Boy find these models, dog? Like, how? I don't know. I think I'm kind of a retired, retired model. Retired now. model? Just because yeah. you want to be. I mean, I don't like, know. It's I'm not because you're because you're yeah. like, no, I'm not trying to do that right now. Yeah, I'm yeah. always doing scraped up and sparring and stuff like yeah. that. Oh, <laughs> showing up the shoes. Scraped up where? Uh, hey. I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah. it. I'm flattered. But, but tell me about that because I'm sure, like, that's those are two crazy and very different type of career paths. Did yeah. you have a moment where you had to choose either or? Uh, eventually, eventually, yeah. At first, no, I was just kind of like, kind of told myself, you know, I was going to maximize my potential in yeah. anything that I did. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't want to look back one day and just be like, oh, I could have done this. So I just, you know, at the same time I was fighting, I was like, screw it, I'm going to sign with uh, Wilhelmina. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. And, yeah, and I was just, you know. Slight just, worry. You don't, yeah. you don't just drop Wilhelmina. Damn. You're just like, oh, we're going to retire. How do you get retire. the best promoters in two games? <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate it. But, um, yeah, I just, you know, I just wanted to do something. And uh, yeah. so yeah. I did. And, uh, kind of let me down a path a little bit and then eventually it was like hey you kind of choose one or the other you know like your time your allocation your energy and whatnot and uh, your focus so yeah. I, you know, obviously boxing was you know is always top tier and so you know that's, that's where I'm at what yeah. is it about boxing because you know like even when I was talking to Hesta there's just I don't know that you could see you can't see the dog you know I talked to Tudor right and there's this guy that's just very well spoken super good kid but in the ring turn into beast you seem like the sweetest, nicest dude. I just want to go eat KBBQ with you, right? <laughs> but in the ring, it's a different story. So what is that switch for you? Or what kind of motivates you and gets that fire out of you in boxing? Oh, shoot. I guess a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I feel like my motivation has like changed over time, mm-hmm. especially when I get in there. Um, I want to win. Mm-hmm. Like I'm probably, I, I think I'm one of the most competitive people I've ever met. Mm-hmm. Um, I, some, some fighters go in there, I think, not to lose. Um, right. I'm like, I'm fully in there to like hurt the other person yep. with everything I can. Cause I mean, that, that's what boxing is. At yeah. the end it's of like, the day, I, I want to be. hurt my yep. as much as I can in those minutes that I have. And so that's, um, that's the goal. You know, it's not like a, like I hate the guy or anything. No, yeah. but, like, so you're there to do a job. Yeah. I'm like, I'm almost, I'm sometimes I'm like frustrated. Like just like, you know, just the pressure and just, you feel you're just fuming yeah. and like the training camp, everything you've been through. And you're just like, I'm going to go in there and just do my job and get out of here. You, you tap know? into that yeah. and then that yeah, it's gets just like, that energy up. Yeah, it's just like, it's it's not like a, I'm not fuming or anything. Right. There, but yeah. I'm, I'm focused. I'm ready to go. And so yeah. that's, I, I, I crave that feeling. There's mm-hmm. nothing else besides boxing that can give me that. Yeah, I'm curious to know more about your pops because your pops was military. Yeah. Right? Um, what what branch of the military? He was he was started off Navy, then kinda of moved into like special operations. Oh wow. That, okay. So, so that's your ops. Yeah, that's your foundation. So how does that like inspire you or just to like, you know, uh, mold you to be who you are today? Uh you know, he taught me hard work and he taught me um nothing nothing worth achieving is easy. Mm-hmm. Um and you know. <laughs> moderation is for cowards you know like, wow. like anything you do overdo it yeah and uh so that's yeah i just I, I learned work ethic at a pretty young age you know i didn't grow up with like a lot of like tvs and video games and this oh. and distractions and my mom's fully korean so she moved here when she was 26 mm. so she brought that also like that work ethic from yep. her culture as well yeah. so me and, my, me and my brother we just grew up just pushing ourselves and Hustle. trying to, trying to just yep. bring out the best and you know that's that's what i feel with a lot of immigrant parents is yeah. you know they come to the u.s and they want you to do better than they did mm-hmm. and Absolutely. so that's um i think that's what they did and they pushed me and obviously i think it's paying off and i'm Hopefully, well, I, I think it will continue. Oh, to, so. That's super dope, dude. Special ops. Yeah, I was tripping out on that. 
Yeah. You're like Jason Bourne or somebody. Jason That's Bourne's kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, like, <laughs> so, right? You're fighting Madsen yeah. this weekend during the Sopela Gesta fight. Now, Madsen did something smart. He went to, Me- like, he's based in Mexico now because that, like, we're going to be out there. Yeah. Mexicans. Yeah. You know, but understanding that he's getting that, like, fighter training, he's getting that one on one, but you also have someone like Ismail on your corner. Yeah. Talk to me about, like, what you see in him and how you kind of, not necessarily how you see the fight playing out, but what your understanding of this opponent specifically versus the other opponents you've had because you're 10 and 0. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, Simon, he's, uh, He's a strong puncher. He's mm-hmm. got you know ten knockouts, and uh, he comes to fight. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, he only has one loss, and that's to like the number one prospect in the U.S. Um, so, you know, that's that's what this is yeah. about. Though it's about taking challenges, and it's about uh, pushing yourself. And um, I plan on doing that. You know, I just, I, th- I think I'm the better fighter, and yeah, like I'm. There's not really yeah. much to say. You know, yeah. it's like you know he's gonna come out, got he's gonna it. fight, and you know, and at this point, no, nothing's easy. You know, yeah. but I, I'm not into this for, for it to be easy. Yeah. I'm ready to go out there and just do my thing, and so let's just let's rock and roll. How deeply do you scout your opponent? Are you like lurking their Instagram, seeing their Facebook, like what they're about, or do you watch tape of them? Like, what is your mm-hmm. way of like scouting? I think I'll like obviously I'll see a fight, mm-hmm. or you know, well, yeah. I, I want to understand like how they fight. Yeah, you know, but. Um, it comes a point where it's just like almost counterproductive just by like just like True, it's focusing digging. on them mm. and it's more about just what work do you need or how focused are you going to be at the end of the exactly, day exactly yeah so um I'll try to get in the guy's head. I'd like Dang. like his girlfriend's pictures. Like his head, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Don't look. <laughs> you, 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 you gotta get in their head. The fight, They're man. gonna go in there with different motivation, distract them from the game plan. But like, I bet you, if he's doing his scouting on you, he's like, oh man, he models with him, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, honestly, like if he's doing like, the opposite and checking your stuff out, like yeah. he's just don't do that. Yeah, he's probably probably like like. I don't. I don't. I don't think that works in my favor at all. You know, mm. especially with opponents and whatnot. They probably like think I'm just like some. Marketing, yeah. You do know? you feel underestimated? Yeah. But it's like that might be even like a pro for you, for people to think it's easier. It's in the bag, and it's like, no, I got my record for a reason. You know. I yeah. don't even care. I mean, it doesn't mm. matter. We're just gonna fight anyways. You yeah. know what I mean? You can talk as much as you want. You can think what yeah. you love me as much as you want. But at the end yeah. of the day, we're gonna have to get in there and we're gonna scrap. And so. It doesn't even matter, you know. Yeah. It's like so. Yeah. You sound like special ops right now. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Special, special ops, ops fighter. Like, yeah, you know, you just get <laughs> we're gonna get there. We're gonna get the job done. We're gonna go home. Let's go home, boys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be. Per- I gotta be perfect for 28 minutes. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. What What type of music are you listening to in the gym while you're working out? Are you getting ready for the fight for? That's so important when it comes to with athletics and when it comes to just motivation. Music is like the determining factor. I feel it can allow you to have a good mood, a bad mood, but it can get you into whatever zone you need to be in. What are what are you into right now? Um, I don't like honestly, I, I I know people say this, but mm. I actually listen to everything, like mm. from like orchestra to like like rap to yeah. like like the hardest rock. I knew he was gonna say mm. some type of orchestra, yeah. or classical, because he feels like a serial killer to me. Yeah. <laughs> what? Really? Yeah. That's on his way to kill someone, but listening to Mozart and it's just like some crazy TV. Don't look at me so like serious. that. I'm no, no, okay, so serious. So serious. I'll, I'll listen to like frequencies, like vibrations and stuff. Just what? like Do it. Yeah. you sound bad. How you for that, sure like, sound bad. Yeah. How does that like improve or like what does that do? Like with the frequency, I'm just totally curious. I've never really. Oh, uh, I mean, like there's just like some science, you know, like mm-hmm. everything's kind of moving at a frequency, wow. you know, and so like you like kind of. Basically, like, it's really, I mean, it's more science than anything right. based on like, what you believe. But it's That's like, um, like if you can, like, uh, basically expose yourself to certain frequencies and stuff like that, your body can be more productive, especially what? in, like, the mind space and, like, perform, I just learned something. function at a higher That's level super sometimes. Dope. Like, even, like, with focus and stuff, yeah. you know, yeah. like, listen to, like, a sound wave before, like, you go take a test or something. It's like, oh. your mind's already on, like, a wavelength level of, like, yep. being able to Damn. stay focused for a longer period of time. Frequency, bro. That's amazing. <sighs> Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. I would have done way better in school, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's working. Whatever yeah, your be, yeah. Is, I'm trying to get on that, that frequency. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Life hacks, you know. What yeah. made you so aware of that? Is, does that come from moms? Does that come from dad? Like, is it just like, okay, we need to just like hone in more? Maybe you have a certain type of discipline that you could just tell, like you're ready to fight. You're ready. You're zoned in. Talk to me about that. Uh, I don't think anybody. I, you, anybody can teach you Mm -hmm. um how to zone in for yourself and Mm -hmm. you know get focused you know you either want it or you don't and i want it and so it's just like i understand like the steps it has to do it's like making a goal it's like all right let's make a goal and it's like i want to win this fight all right what do i have to do to get there yeah and just to make sure that i'm fully prepared you know what i mean like and the factors that i can't control and just go out there and 
do it then. You know, that's that's where the point I'm at now is like yeah. I've done everything. I've not left like one stone stone unturned, and mm-hmm. so the only thing left to do is to go do it. So You're, wow, it's easy when you say it. Okay? I appreciate I appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> like, but like yeah. when we say it, we're like, oh, zone in. You had to put slug glasses on because he's tired. No, I'm not tired. I got I had to, to put coffee in my veins <laughs> to do this. No, now yeah. I'm gonna like listen to frequencies. Yeah, listen to frequencies. <laughs> yeah. Zone in. Yeah. Watch born identity. All that good exactly. stuff. Watch born identity. Yeah, <laughs> it probably has nothing to do with it. I've never seen yeah. it to be honest. Which is the it's way actually a great telling, movie. Yeah, it's yeah, a great series. Ten out of ten. You know. I love that. You know, I was thinking about it because it's funny. Uh, Canelo talks about how he likes to listen to, like, romantic music. But that gets him, like, into a fighter's, like, stance. Like, he get, he loves listening to, in Spanish, like, they're called romanticas. But it's just music about romance, right? Yeah. But it, then he just goes and beats someone's ass, right? Yeah. Okay. Does, well, that makes sense. You know, yeah. I've heard a lot of stuff, like, like um, I've, I've often said, like, uh, true focus lies between, like, anger and serenity. Mm-hmm. So, like, Whoa. that's that's where your, your true focus is. It's like, because, yeah. like, I feel like fear uh, or anger and then, right. like, sadness is, like, like the two, like, most, like, strong emotions. Mm. Yeah. So, if you can kind of, like, get between that, like, you're just focused. There's no noise. <laughs> There's nothing. You know what I mean? So my, like, that makes sense. I, mean, I, I, I get it. I, I don't listen to like yeah. like Pearl Harbor music before like, Pearl Harbor like, music before, is like crazy. you know what I mean or like like yeah. Titanic music before right. I go fight. But right. whatever but you works, you know. Whatever works. <laughs> I get it. I understand it. Hey, do you have a nickname? You know how everyone has like a cool little like is it Eric Blank Priest? Are they calling you anything? Because Zen Master could work. Just throwing it out there. Zen Master. Yeah, yeah Zen you're Master. You're just so freaking Zen, but at yeah. the same time. Vroom. Or high frequency. Yeah. That's the problem I'm having. Is I'm it, trying to be like spiritually yeah. evolved, but I'm also trying to beat somebody. Up exactly yeah. like I mean, it's kind it's like, of counteracting ooh, no, it. it yeah, itself. It's like I, I run into that problem Hold a little up. bit sometimes eric's special ops priest oh my god oh, that's fire <laughs> that's <laughs> fire don't tell dad that dad's like yes that's it that's it that's it that's it yeah you, but like, that would be like, you didn't earn that like yeah. oh. yo i would be freaked out if my opponent had special ops as a nickname like what, what? what did you sign me up for i thought it was a fight out. not a death match yeah do you do mortal combat yeah do you take your family to the fights because sometimes Sometimes there is that line of you don't want them to really see things go down because it can get scary. For I'm sure, a mom yeah. and I have a little one. He's five years old, but he's ready to start boxing. And even just me thinking about it makes me feel like, oh, my God, I'm so I have anxiety just thinking about it. Talk to me about like your parents, just support of you going into this profession. That's very brutal. Yeah. Uh, obviously, yeah, boxing is not a game. You don't mm-hmm. really play boxing. Um, uh, but I don't know. Like screw it, they like it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, okay. my, they're already here. You know, for this fight. Oh, that's so, awesome. Like, you know, oh, they, that's they so support. Cool. You know, like my mom, I don't think she was like the biggest fan, like getting started in it. You right. Know, mm-hmm. Like your kids getting punched in the face. Yep. But like now, you know, it's like kind of inevitable. And yeah. like, if you're, if you're like, you know, you're gonna be there, support anyway. So like, you know, it's they they love it. They're you know, my whole family's behind me, and that feels good. That's for sure. Yeah. Are your parents? Uh, are on like social media like bragging about you or like telling people back and like does your mom call back to like south korea and be like hey like my son is this and this and that or like i don't think so no? i think i think like, like most of, i have korea i have family in korea a lot and i'm like yeah. i don't i don't think they really even know what's going on uh, yeah you know it, it's yeah. such a different culture Super. yeah um but i don't know like my dad has facebook so that's yeah. what i'm yeah. gonna say it's all it's all happening on facebook it's all happening on facebook yeah it's he's active so <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so cool. Look, we love to meet you. We love to support you. And it's going down this weekend. Yeah. It's going to be a great fight. You want to be there. Goldenboardpromotions.com to get your tickets. Also, live stream it on the zone. But if you're out here in L.A., go out go and watch fight. this fight. There's nothing like being in a fight. The energy is insane. And it's all focused in on the ring. And that's what I love about the fight. Like, it's not, your attention is right there. And I'm sure, like, the crowd yelling or the crowd, just the energy of the crowd, it's like that other player. You know that yeah. other, the other, the other fighter is the crowd. So I just can't wait to see you do your thing, I and I know it. you got it. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Of course, appreciate it. of course. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. through, Eric Priest. It's Power One Hundred Six Brown Bag Mornings.